All this week, we've told you stories about the three Cleveland missing women 10 years later. It was a traumatic event, not only for the victims, but for the many people who lived right next to where it all happened. I visited the area and spoke to one man who was there when this took place. And we're asking, what does the future hold for the space where this heinous incident occurred? Historically, Seymour, there's a lot of dark things that have happened on Seymour. The sound of a bell. It symbolizes a call for reflection, healing, and hope. It's been a decade since Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Gina DeJesus were rescued on Seymour Avenue. And for those who were there, the healing over what happened has been difficult. This community, especially this block, was, not to say nervous, I mean, all in shock and fired up inside emotionally. Reverend Horst Hoyer, was the senior pastor at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, which was two doors down from the home where Ariel Castro held the kidnapped women captive for years. Today, he's retired, but vividly remembers what happened on that day in May of 2013 after receiving a call from the FBI. The man requested, he says, the reason for call, I need to use your building. We need to put a command post in your auditorium. After the FBI came the Sheriff's Department, Cleveland Police 2nd District, State Department, State of Ohio, you name it, we had them in our auditorium. And as the Reverend assisted law enforcement and the community, Hoyer learned that his church served as a beacon of hope for the three women. There was no way that Mr. Castro could keep the sound of these bells out of his walls. Michelle Knight, one of the victims, mentioned and said, it gave us hope. They knew when it was Sunday morning. They knew when it was Christmas. Those bells were telling them. Since then, that bell has been silent. The neighborhood has changed, but slightly. A new animal clinic down the street and the vacant lot where the home once stood. What are residents telling you they want to see in that particular space? I have residents that are against that. They don't want to remember it. Cleveland City Councilwoman Jasmine Santana's ward covers this section of Seymour Avenue. Her constituents say they want something other than a park or garden to fill that space. They want infill housing right, um, new construction homes, market rate homes, and kind of bring the value of that street um, up. All while trying to build up community morale. There's still a lot of trust that needs to be built. I think that event highlighted that we had, we've lost that. And so trying to get back to that place where neighbors are helping neighbors and they're coming together. Um, so we're not there yet, um, that is my hope. Well, many people who live on Seymour Avenue, or should I say lived on Seymour Avenue 10 years ago, have moved on. And we spoke to some people who currently live there, but they didn't want to speak on camera and we respected their wishes. They told us that they want their community to be like any other neighborhood, a place to visit, and not a, quote, tourist attraction. Now your 